Whether it's some kind of giant, spy-slaying laser beam, or a more handheld variety being thrown around by Neil Patrick Harris, the trope of the death ray-wielding mad scientist has been around for a while. But in the real world, we don't have to worry about some maniac melting our cars or setting us on fire with the sheer harnessed power of the sun, or do we? August 29th, 2013. Martin Lindsay, director of the Moderna Contracts Limited Tiling Company, had parked his Jaguar XJ on East Cheap in the city of London. When he returned two hours later, he saw a photographer taking photos of his car. According to his recount in the BBC, the photographer asked me, Have you seen that car? The owner won't be happy. I said, I am the owner. Crikey, that's awful. The wing mirror, panels, and badge on the car had all melted, as if melted by some kind of supervillain straight out of a comic book wielding a Death Ray. That's right, Lukeworm. You may have escaped my volcano trap, but now you shall face the sheer solar power of the sun! Uh, weren't we friends an episode ago? I mean, yes, but now my blood runs hot for ice-cold revenge. Prepare to get burned. Yeah. Uh, something like that. Ah, tales straight from the days of watching TV with an antenna that looked like bunny ears. I want a TV bunny. Sounds cute. But Lindsay wasn't the only one who found themselves at the mercy of this seemingly mysterious death ray wielding maniac. Restyle Barbers on East Cheap was caught by surprise when a hot beam of light set the carpet alight, and nearby Viet Cafe also found their flooring destroyed. Not only did this death ray blotch and melt the paint off the building, but the beam also caught caused the tiles on the front step to literally explode. Wait, what? <laughs> Did somebody say buildings that set things on fire? Not in those exact words, but yes, something to that effect. All right, go on, don't mind me. It got to a point where in order to demonstrate how real this death ray was, people started to literally fry eggs from the beam of light alone. Reporter Jim Watterson put a cracked egg into a frying pan and held it within the death ray, where it fried to satisfaction and was then promptly served and eaten within a sandwich. Truly the greatest way to harness the overwhelming power of a death ray, cooking. This gives me ideas. That makes me worried. London isn't the only city encountering this strange onset of a strange death ray. Las Vegas also suffered at the whims of what we can only assume was some kind of masked menace in 2010. Guests at the Vidara Hotel found themselves getting hit by a sudden hotspot in the pool area. This roaming ray supposedly rose the temperature by 20 degree Fahrenheit, leaving some guests baking in over 100 degree heat that burned their skin and even melted plastic cups. So what's the cause of all this? And could a solar-powered death ray even be real? Well, yes, they could be. Especially if you accept legends and myths as a source. Between 214 and 212 BCE, the Roman Empire laid siege to the city of Syracuse as part of the Second Punic War. But they didn't expect a mad scientist. Oh, do go on. Well, Archimedes was a native of Syracuse, and legend says that he had constructed a number of super weapons to aid in the city's defense, like a crane that could lift ships up and capsize them, and a curved mirror that focused sunlight into some kind of death ray to set Roman ships on fire. His death ray has even been referenced in more modern times. For example, the Obsidian RPG Fallout New Vegas had the Archimedes II laser weapon and Mythbusters did an episode about it. While Adam Savage did build a smaller scale version of Archimedes' death ray, they decided that the tale as told was likely busted. We don't have to rely on myths to know if solar-powered death rays are possible though. Backyard engineers have been building their own for some time now. Like YouTuber, the King of Random, who constructed a solar death ray using a Fresnel lens that was able to concentrate sunlight into a beam that reached up to 2000 degrees Fahrenheit, enough to instantly ignite gasoline, boil water, and melt both metal and concrete. And to prove that the King of Random's design works, fellow YouTuber Nick Uas built a solar death ray from the same materials and used it to melt zinc, a metal with a melting point of 787 degrees Fahrenheit. Kind of like how mean kids use a magnifying glass to burn ants. <laughs> Not that I would. 
Yeah, why burn eggs when you can burn other more fun things? Like popsicle stick houses or uh, matchstick sculptures. Isn't that destroying art? No, pff, the art is in the destroying. I mean, I guess it's something like that. Just, in this case, a lot more powerful and less harmful to the little critters, as disgusting as they may be. And then there's Nikola Tesla. Yes, internet favorite mad genius Tesla didn't just construct new ways to wirelessly transmit electricity, he also built a death ray. Or he claimed to at least. He called it the Teleforce and hated people calling it a death ray because a ray would dissipate into the air while his weapon fired in a beam. Choo choo! So it was more of a beam weapon then. Giant robots! You've somehow managed to stumble on the one kind of cool anime. All anime is cool. According to the New York Times, the weapon will send concentrated beams of particles through the free air of such tremendous energy that they will bring down a fleet of 10,000 enemy airplanes at a distance of 250 miles. Tesla actually intended it to be a deterrent though, not a weapon. He believed that the Teleforce would make war impossible given that it could strike from such a distance. Of course, there's little evidence to show that Tesla ever constructed the Teleforce, even though he claimed to have built one. He had approached both the United States and Soviet Union about the project, but neither wanted to fund it. When Tesla died, the US Army raided the hotel room he was studying at, with no death ray nor plans to be found. So could some maniac be running around London and Vegas blasting people with a death ray? Or is there something else at work here? Well, let's take a look at the area surrounding the affected regions. Excellent idea, Quiz! In Vegas, the wandering death ray struck guests at the Vidara Hotel and Spa around the pool, scorching hair, burning skin, and melting plastic cups and bags. Which means that there's either a death ray wielding scientist within or on the hotel, or it's likely the hotel itself. Likewise, the issues in London also took place near a rather shiny building. 20 Fenchurch Street, or the Walkie Talkie, is a distinct skyscraper designed by architect Raphael Vinoli, who also designed the Vidara Hotel. So maybe it's not a coincidence. And importantly, both share a design element, specifically curved glass facades. In the case of the Vidara Hotel, the death beam that has been terrorizing pool goers is caused by a solar convergence phenomenon, as the hotel's management put it. In more simple terms, the curved design of the Vidara appears to focus sunlight that hits it into a beam 10 to 15 feet across that wanders the pool area. But here's the question, how did the architects not see this coming? They did. They actually coated the southern face of the building in a layer of window film to reduce the sun's power by 70%. Which still wasn't enough. Of course it wasn't. Do you want to try and defeat the sheer unrelenting burning power of the sun? It can't be done. But they did find a solution. Deck umbrellas. Boo! And as for the walkie-talkie, it had a similar effect, reflecting sunlight back into a focused beam of sunlight that was capable of setting carpets on fire, melting cars, and, yes, cooking eggs. To fix the death ray effect, the developer of the walkie-talkie installed shades on the windows that were causing it, a fix that was estimated to cost millions of dollars and took six months to complete back in 2014. And to top it all off, the walkie-talkie won the Carbuncle Cup Prize for Worst Building in 2015 and earned some other less flattering nicknames in the process, like Walkie Scorchy or my personal favorite, Fry Scraper. There is something amusing about the fact that it took one of the ancient world's greatest minds to allegedly create a death ray, while in the 2010s alone someone has done it twice by accident. When designing something, it's important to consider the side effects. Exactly! And we should consider how best to harness the shape of the building to burn down our competitors. Just like that Why Is Kids You Know skit. Or, yeah, you know, maybe consider how not to burn things down. You're such a spoil spoil. Especially since the solar death beam isn't the only side effect the walkie-talkie had on London. Down draughts of wind from the building caused gusts at its base strong enough to nearly blow over pedestrians walking nearby. In fact, fears of more wind tunnels forming led the City of London to announce more restrictions on skyscraper construction in 2019. The new regulations apparently weren't in response to any specific incident, but a spokeswoman did say they were closely monitoring high-rise buildings, including the walkie-talkie, to ensure wind conditions in the surrounding streets remain stable. I guess you could say that this whole thing really shined a light on construction issues. Boo!
I'll bet that if you were building a skyscraper, you'd think about whether or not your project could turn into a giant magnifying glass roasting people like ants on a hot summer day. Now, you're probably not concerned about fixing solar convergence phenomena, but learning skills at today's sponsor, Brilliant, can help you better understand how to approach your own day-to-day -day problems. Brilliant is a learning website that offers a broad range of interactive courses on mathematics, problem solving, and even quantum computing and cryptocurrency. With over 60 different courses, Brilliant takes wild and complicated subjects, turning them into bite-sized lessons that are not only educational, but also entertaining. When I first started using Brilliant's logic course, I thought I'd breeze through, but it turns out that actually working through problems is easier said than done. But I had a blast solving puzzles in their course on logic. Brilliant gives you small quizzes and puzzles that help you develop a framework to tackle anything life throws at you and improve your critical thinking skills. Go to brilliant.org brew to sign up for free. And also, the first 200 people will get 20% off their annual premium membership. Neat! This episode took quite a bit to construct. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell to get notified about new episodes. Thank you.